Assalamu alaikum. So in this video, I will be speaking about my revert story. For those of you who haven't seen me on TikTok, basically I was born Jewish to a Jewish family and I converted to Islam in 2018. So I get asked a lot of how I converted to Islam, of course, as most reverts get this question. So in this video, I'll get into it. So, as I mentioned, I was born to a Jewish family. I was born in Montreal, Canada, um, to actually a Hasidic family. So, up until I was three or four years old, um, up until my parents' divorce, I was raised Hasidic. And afterwards, um, once my parents got divorced, my mother took me and my siblings out of the Hasidic community. But we still remained um, Jewish, of course, and we still remained in the Jewish community. So, uh, just a little background, my father is Ashkenazi Jewish, he is uh, from Eastern, his family comes from Eastern Europe, and my mother is Mizrahi and Sephardic, and um, that means her mother was born in Morocco, and her father was born in Yemen, and my mother was actually born in occupied Palestine, or as you know, Jewish people call it, Israel. So growing up, I always considered myself Israeli, Jewish, um, Moroccan, Yemeni, Ashkenazi, you know, all of the above, but definitely was held very close to my uh, Jewish ethnicity. And still today, I do consider myself Jewish, Jewish ethnically, um, which people sometimes have difficulty understanding, but I still consider myself uh, as an ethnic Jew who is religiously Muslim. So to start, I guess, how it all began, um, it's kind of, it's a definitely a long story. So, sorry. So I went to a Jewish school my whole life, obviously up until the end of high school. So at that point, I was super, you know, super Jewish, believed in God. I always believed in God, but I believed in Judaism specifically. I believed in the Torah. I believed in the teach teachings of Judaism um, because I had a Jewish education and I held really closely to that. Um, since I went to Jewish school, I was also actually a staunch Zionist. I was super, super pro-Israel. Um, and yeah, I held really closely to my, my, you know, my religion and to, I guess, what I thought was my nationality um, being Israeli. Um, so my whole high school and elementary, I, was consi I considered myself Jewish and I practiced Judaism um, pretty religiously. My family, although they left the Hasidic community, we still remained uh, like modern Orthodox or conservative. So we still dressed mos modestly and um, we kept Shabbat, we kept all the holidays, we kept fully kosher. And I mean, we still do keep fully kosher in my family's home. Um, so yeah, it was only until I graduated high school, once I left, you know, the Jewish community, um, that I started meeting, you know, non-Jewish people, and it all started basically when people would, like, start asking me questions about Judaism, and I would answer them, and sometimes I'd be met with challenges, they would, like, challenge me, but this, 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 for example, I had um, a woman ask me about Shabbat, and I explained to her because, you know, the Torah says that we must uh, cease work on the, on the seventh, um, on the seventh day, because God created the world in six days, on the seventh day he rested, and she was like, yeah, but you know, how come you can't use your phone, you can't do this, you can't do that, there are a lot of rules, and you know, it started putting a lot of doubt in me, and I remember that question specifically from that woman, I still remember who asked me that, her name was Mary, and I worked with her at a grocery store, <laughs> and anyways, I, I still remember that, and it really like, like stuck with me, and at that point, like soon after, I started realizing that a lot of things that Jewish people were doing didn't make sense to me. And I was like, hmm. So I, I started distancing myself away from Judaism. For example, I started like sneaking my phone on Shabbat. So I wasn't like full, keeping Shabbat fully like my family was. So I'd be in my bed under my covers because I shared a room with my sister and I'd be on my phone. Um, so it kind of started like that. And like I, I started having like a bit of doubt in my heart about like what I was practicing. And then I like basically started dis distancing myself from God. Um, so I lived like that for a few months. But then at one point I was like, I feel like alienated from God. I feel like I need to become closer to God. I feel like I need to, to mend my relationship with God because 
I was starting to feel, you know, empty without God's presence in my life. So um, before going to school every day on the bus, I took a little Tehillim, which is a book of Psalms, which is written by the King David. Um, and I started reading that uh, and I was like, you know what, hopefully that's going to, you know, ignite my, you know, my passion, my like in Arabic, we say my Iman, my faith. Um, so I started reading that and like it was really nice. It was a nice book. And I remember one thing in particular that I remember that kept reoccurring, reoccurring was how King David mentioned um, that, you know, he was prostrating in prayer to God. We prostrate in prayer to you, God. And it was mentioned over and over and over and over again. And that got me curious. So I was like, why don't Jews prostrate during prayer? So I Googled it. I went to Chabad.org, blah, blah, blah. I did a lot of research, um, spoke to rabbis. But like, it still did not like satisfy me. I, all the responses I was getting were not satisfactory to me. Um, so I was like, this is weird. So I was, as I was doing a lot of research, um, like I was reading Jews prostrate during prayer, um, the sect of the Karait Jews came up. So the Karait Jews are Jews who um, follow strictly the Torah and they don't follow like the, the Talmud and other rabbinical texts or interpretations. And it was at that point that I realized that like Judaism, like standard modern Judaism that people practice today is called rabbinic Judaism because it is inspired um, not inspired, but a lot of the rules and a lot of the holidays and the regulations that Jews practice today are from rabbis, from rabbinical interpretations, you know, sages, basically, from the past. And it was at that point that I was like, hmm, that's strange. Like, But it also explained my questions, like, why did we do this on uh, Passover? Why did we do this on uh, Hanukkah? Why did we do this on Rosh Hashanah? And it started, it answered a lot of my questions. I was like, it makes sense because they're following the interpretations of rabbis and they're not following, you know, like strictly, they're following the word of the Torah, but these these specifications, even like the, the Shabbat, you know, restrictions don't come specifically, all of them from the Torah. Um, so I was like, you know what, maybe I should look into Karaite Judaism because it made sense to me. They were following strictly the Torah. At that same time, I didn't really have any Muslim friends. I had one Muslim friend, but she wasn't, you know, never, we never spoke about religion. But I knew some, like, Muslim people online that I would sometimes speak to. And one time I had, like, a whole conversation with, um, like, it wasn't a friend. It was, like, a Muslim online friend that I never met, actually. I never really met in real life. Um, but anyways, uh, we had a discussion, and we were sending each other videos uh, about, like, you know, religion and... I saw this one video about like, you know, debates between Muslims and Jews. And I started realizing um, at that point that um, Islam and Judaism are based, are so similar. It was also at that point that I realized that Jews and Muslims believe in the same God and also Christians, but that's not really relevant to the story. But up to till now, to this point, I basically thought that, you know, Muslims worshipped a different God. They worshipped Allah which is a different God. <laughs> I realized that Allah is actually just the name for God in Arabic, just like, you know, Jew is Arabic and French. So I was like, hmm, okay, they believe in the Torah, they believe in the Gospels, they believe in all of the Jewish prophets that, you know, Jews believe in. And the only thing that they believe in more is um, the Prophet Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad as the seal of the prophets and the Quran as the word of God. So basically, that's the only addition that it has to over Judaism. And I also, while I was Jewish, like was like, oh yeah, Muslims stole our texts. They're just reusing. They're like copying our texts. That's really what I believed. And I realized that it wasn't copying Jewish texts. It was literally the same God. So God was continuing his message. It's the same message. And it just has, I guess, some like new information, some new tweaks. And I like explained it to myself as like, hmm, it's like an update. <laughs> um, people don't like when I use that term, but in my head, I was like, hmm, it's like an update to Judaism. So at that point, I was like, okay, it's not a whole different thing. And I decided to actually start looking to Islam. And also, when I was thinking about, you know, um, the, when I was reading the Tehillim and I realized that, you know, he was saying, well, we prostrate, prostrate in prayer to God, I did actually think of Muslims. So I was like, hmm, okay, that makes sense why Muslims um, pray to God. Um, I mean, pray to God, you know, in like the way they do with like prostration because that's what God wanted. That's what God said. Um, and that's how Jews were praying um, up until a certain point, until the rabbis came along and said, you know, we don't pray this way anymore. 
Um, and I also remember, you know, how like Muslims pray without their shoes on. And I was like, that makes sense because a mosque is a holy ground. When you pray to, to, when you speak to God, you're speaking to someone so holy, you know, so you have to respect them and take off your shoes. And, and I thought of, you know, the time when, when Moses spoke to God and in the, in the burning fire, the Snebo El Ba'esh, um, I'm not sure exactly what it's called in English, but it's like the fire. And God said, please take off your shoes, take off your shoes to speak to me and to address me. And this was holy ground, so he had to take off his shoes. And I was like, hmm, that makes sense. And it was like little things like this. At this point, I still was not like actually considering being Muslim. But it was little things like that. It kept being added into him, like, you know, I kept realizing that I was like, okay, Islam makes sense. This makes sense. Until one point, I was like, you know what, I'll read the Quran. And I started reading the Quran, and the Quran made sense. And I was like, hmm, like, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's 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 perfect. But at, at that point, I still wasn't, like, fully, you know, convinced, like, I'm going to change my religion because I felt like the thing that was holding me back most was honestly, um, I felt like I'd be abandoning all of my cultures, all of my traditions. Everything that I once believed in would be, like, completely gone just because, you know, like, I'm changing my religion and this was my religion was a fundamental part of me of who I was and I had a really hard time you know drifting like separating myself from that and you know accepting Islam but at some point I realized that actually um, accepting Islam and being Muslim, Muslim and practicing with Islam would actually make me a better Jew and I wasn't separating myself from Judaism I was it was the same God I was still being you know it was still the same religion as as, as the God of Judaism so I, I came to realize that at some point and it was just over time like I said many little things that that I learned about Islam that made sense to me you know even the modesty and you know how uh, the modesty of like you know how Muslims dress um, it made sense to me and I'm like my whole life modesty made sense to me because I was raised Jewish and and, and it just all made sense to me and I can't exactly remember what was the thing the last drop that made me um Muslim but I do remember when I decided basically to become Muslim it was Ramadan it was 2017 and I was like you know what I'm gonna do Ramadan just because just want to see how how what it's like you know so I was like I'll do it and as a Jew I, I had fasted for like Yom Kippur so it was like 25 hours for Yom Kippur so I'm like yeah I can do this and I was able to do this and I was like you know what I want to fully immerse myself in it so I'm gonna like pray too so subhanallah I actually learned to pray like really quickly and I remember that this, I think it's it's in the Quran or it says that you know God made this language easy for you to understand and I was like subhanallah I, I, like, I did I was able to learn to pray so quick and I never had even spoken Arabic all I knew was like shukran and salam <laughs> like honestly so I started praying and I remember one time I was in bed, I was like, okay, how do you become Muslim? And it said, you just need to repeat this word. It was the shahada, the sentence. So I said it on my bed, I was like, you know, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And I said it and I'm like, am I Muslim now? Like, I feel the same. So technically I was Muslim since 2017, but I still at that point wasn't like fully like immersed in Islam. Like my heart wasn't fully there. So I don't necessarily consider myself fully Muslim at that point. Um, and I still had some things to work on, you know, um, the abstain from certain things that Muslim must abstain from. But yeah, I was still starting to, you know, like, you know, think about Islam. I went to some Jum'ah prayers. Um, and then it wasn't until uh, later, it was in January, I met this girl online. And actually, it was funny. Um, she, I was like posting a lot of stuff about Israel, like a lot of pro-Israel stuff. And she like was sent over by one of her other friends who like sent her over to talk to me and be like, why are you like supporting this guy? And anyways, we started talking and then I told her like we started hanging out too. And then at one point um, I told her, I'm like, you know what? I want to just convert to Islam. Um, like, I want to do it. I want to fully do it. So it was in January 26, 2018 that I actually converted to Islam. I took my shahada and that's when I consider myself fully Muslim. And yeah, that was pretty much it, how I went from being Jewish to being Muslim. Um, I hope this video wasn't too long, and I have like different things I can add, but I don't want to make this video too long, so if you have any questions, you can always ask me more questions, and I will address these topics as best as I can. Thank you so much, and ma'asalamah.